Hey, future respiratory therapist. So um, today we're going to wrap up the uh, kind of the series I started back a couple of weeks ago when I started talking about ABG interpretation. We walked through and talked about the different stages of respiratory alkalosis, the different stages of respiratory acidosis, the different stages of metabolic alkalosis, and the different stages of metabolic acidosis. So that only leaves really two categories left, and that is our mixed alkalosis and our mixed acidosis. Now I'm gonna do these two together today. I'm gonna to show you what it looks like, and then hopefully um, you guys can come at me. If it doesn't make sense or you have questions, be sure and put them in the comments below. I would love to, to, to respond to you and answer and just, more than anything, just have discourse with you. And, um, you know, so yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so we're talking about, let's do first uh, mixed alkalosis. This is where we're going to start. Okay, now remember, we always start at baseline. So what are our normal values? We know our normal pH equals 7.40. Our normal CO2, 35 to 45 is, let's just go 40. We know normal pH is 735 to 745. And then we have normal bicarb 22 to 26. We're gonna go with 24. This is a normal blood gas. There are no disturbances present right now for this blood gas. But when we see a combination of disturbances happen that both are going to cause an alkalosis. So your respiratory component is going to cause an alkalosis and your metabolic component is going to cause an alkalosis, that's where we end up with a mixed alkalosis. Now remember, in regards to the respiratory component, an alkalosis will be caused when CO2 goes down beneath normal. So let's just say it goes down to 25, okay? On our bicarb side of things and our metabolic component, we know that when bicarb goes up, that creates a metabolic alkalosis. So let's say that this is 30, okay? So here we have a bicarb that is elevated. We have a CO2 that is decreased. Both of these will create an alkalosis. So, so what you're gonna see here is an exaggerated alkalotic pH. And what we get when we do this is 7.69. Now, here's what I want you to understand, because I see this a lot. I see students who say, oh, it must be a um, partially compensated mixed alkalosis, okay? Let me help you right now. If you ever have a mixed problem such as this, there is no compensated, partially compensated, compensating. There is none of that, okay? There's not any of that because you can't have both of your, um, your components, your respiratory component and your metabolic component. One can't compensate for the other if they're both going towards the alkalotic range. So is that, that makes sense, right? So like you, you, normally, if your respiratory system was to present in an alkalotic range, such as this, your bicarb would go down to try to pull your pH back down into normal range. Vice versa is true also. If you have your bicarb that goes up, then your pH goes up, and your respiratory component to compensate will slow down minute volume. It will hold on to more carbon dioxide to allow this pH to come back down, okay, from the state of alkalosis. But that's not what's happening here. You don't have a compensatory mechanism when you have a mixed disturbance such as this. You have two problem causers and zero uh, players that are trying to compensate, okay? So there is no partially, fully compensated, none of that. It's just simply mixed alkalosis. Now, what would cause this is what the question is because you got to say, okay, well, what would cause a mixed alkalosis? And to answer that question, you simply have to go back to what causes a respiratory alkalosis? And we said there were several things, right? Pain, fear, anxiety, right? And then we also said, I'm just going to put up for early. But we also said early presentation of disease processes. 
Okay, so if a person comes into the hospital and gets an ABG in the early stages of a pneumonia, it will probably present as a respiratory alkalosis because that's what the body does. The early disease process starts creating this shunt, starts causing this mild hypoxemia, and the respiratory system starts to breathe faster and deeper to try to bring in more oxygen to get rid of carbon dioxide before it gets to a state of severity where an acute ventilatory failure phase is now happening. Okay, so typically early phases of all diseases present with a respiratory alkalosis. Okay, remember if you go back and watch that video, and if you haven't, I suggest you to go back and watch that video and you'll see where I state this. And I say, I say, you know, don't sleep on these patients because just because they're not acidotic does not mean they're not going to become acidotic. But for right now, what would cause this person to uh, blow their CO2 down to 25? It can be several things, pain, fear, anxiety, early, um, early disease process, um, head injury. They have a tendency to hyperventilate. So multiple things. You got to figure out which one it is. Then we ask ourselves, okay, well, what would cause the bicarb to go up? Well, one of the things we know um, in conjunction with um, just electrolyte imbalances in general is um, excessive or prolonged use of diuretics. Um, we also talked about metabolic alkalosis being a loss of acid in the body, which would cause your bicarb to be in excess, which would cause a metabolic alkalosis. So maybe also um, um, persistent vomiting could cause a metabolic alkalosis. So you see here where you have multiple things going on, okay? And you have to ask yourself, how do we fix the respiratory alkalosis? And how do we fix the metabolic alkalosis? This is no longer about fixing the underlying problem and the compensatory mechanism will just take care of it itself. See, if you have a, a patient comes in with DK, a diabetic ketoacidosis, that's going to present most likely with a uh, partially compensated metabolic acidosis. The body is blowing off CO2 in an attempt to bring pH up in and, and all we have to do is fix the DKA. If you fix the DKA, give insulin and fluids, the patient will stop hyperventilating on their own as the pH comes back to normal. But here we have two problems and we got to figure out how to fix both of them. Okay. So you got to break it down and find uh, the, um, you know, the, the reason for the cause because you have two problem causers now. Okay. So that is what a mixed alkalosis looks like. Alkalotic pH decreased carbon dioxide, increased bicarbonate levels, mixed alkalosis. Now, we're just going to change up here uh, one word, and we're going to turn this alkalosis into acidosis. Now, I do have to change all of these words, so let me get this off here, and we'll fix this up here real quick. Okay, now... When we're talking about a mixed acidosis, we're basically talking about the exact opposite of what I just described. I just described an alkalosis where you have two problem causers, the respiratory components in that bicarb or the metabolic component, both of them causing an alkalosis. Now flip the script and take your respiratory component and your metabolic component and have both of them cause an acidosis. Now if you think back to this, you should understand, you should know, okay, I got this. An acidosis will be caused anytime your CO2 rises above normal, outside of the normal range. So if our CO2 goes up to 55, this will cause a respiratory acidosis. Anytime our bicarb goes down beneath the normal range, 22 to 26, anytime it falls beneath that, it will cause a metabolic acidosis. So now you have a respiratory component causing acidosis with a high CO2 and your metabolic component causing an acidosis with either a loss of bicarb or an increased anion gap or an increased amount of non-volatile acids. This again will exaggerate the acidity of your pH. So your pH is going to be very, very acidotic. That's what it would look like. Okay. Now, again, how do we fix it? Well, you have to ask yourself, um, what's causing the problem? Just like we did with the alkalosis, right? What is causing the problem? Well, we know that um, 
diseases, pulmonary diseases can cause gas impairment, right? So that could cause your CO2 to go up. So um, um, certain disease process, especially in the later stages or the moderate to severe stages of it, you'll see um, CO2 rising. Uh, we also call this acute vent failure, right? When our CO2 goes up and our pH goes down, acute ventilatory failure. So this patient could be an acute vent failure. This could also follow um, a respiratory arrest. Okay? And then what would cause our, our bicarb to go down? Well, a bunch of things, right? Like we've talked about it. Loss of bicarb. So I'm just going to put two things up here. Loss of HCO3. Sorry about that. Or increase in non-volatile acids. So this could be an example of increase in non-volatile acids. It would kind of be what I talked about a minute ago. If you have DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, that's an increase. It will give you an increased anion gap because of the increase in non-volatile acids. If you have, um, say, cardiac arrest, then you're going to lose perfusion to the tissues, which means there's not going to be any oxygen delivery to the tissues, which means the tissues are going to... To, to transfer into anaerobic metabolism and they're going to produce lactic acid would be a buildup of a non-volatile acid and give you an increased anion gap, which would cause a decrease in your bicarb. Or if you had, say, excessive diarrhea and you had a loss of bicarb, actually losing bicarb through your body, then that would also cause a loss of bicarb. So the question is, what's causing it? And you have to figure it out. There's no difference from when we did our metabolic acidosis video, and I told you you have to look at the anion gap, you have to do the same thing here to figure out what's causing this, okay? This blood gas right here is a favorite trick question of mine. I love asking, I love giving an example of this blood gas and saying, what do you think happened to this patient? Or I love after, I don't really love this because it's kind of bad to say I love it, but after uh, say we do a code blue, and within that code blue, we got an ABG, and the blood gas looks something like this. Before I give results, I always like to ask, what do you think the blood gas is gonna look like? And I always get high CO2s, but I never get low bicarbs. And that's just because the idea of anaerobic metabolism is difficult to grasp for, for students. And so, but, but that makes sense, right? Cardiac arrest, the heart ceases to, 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 to circulate blood, the patient's no longer breathing, so you have a buildup of CO2, and by the time we get a blood gas, we find something like this. CO2 is high, the lactic acidosis is present, so bicarb is low, and we have a mixed acidosis. What do we have to do? We have to treat the CO2, get it down to normal, and then treat whatever the problem is here to get it up to normal. And you'll get your pH restored, okay? But again, just like with the alkalosis, there is no compensatory mechanism happening here. Anytime you see a pH that is being caused by both the respiratory and the metabolic components, it is a mixed disturbance, and you got to figure out what's causing both disturbances. Okay? Hey, guys, I hope this helps. If you enjoyed this and you think it's valuable, hit the subscribe button for me. And by all means, please give me a comment. And if nothing else, just tell me where you're from. I just, I just like to hear from people and interact. And, and see what you're doing in your facilities and at your school. And I hope everybody's staying safe. And I, I just, um, just best wishes to everybody. Okay.